When most people hear about the blood of Jesus Christ, it seems semi-barbaric. In other words, what does blood have to do with going to heaven? Well, in order to understand that, we have to scientifically examine what blood is according to science and then according to the Bible. And I'm going to show you that they match up beautifully. And I'm going to show you why blood has to do with salvation. More so, the blood of Jesus Christ has to do with us going to heaven, transcending, moving up into heaven to a higher realm, to a higher frequency. That's what heaven, one of the things, a couple of the things that heaven is. It's a higher plane of existence. You are in a higher frequency. You are on a higher everything. And so let's examine blood scientifically. So we've all seen Jurassic Park, right? Blood contains DNA. And in Jurassic Park, they give a pretty good explanation of what DNA is. DNA is the building blocks to life, to your life. It's code. It's almost computer code. It is computer code in the sense that it breaks down into even numbers. Oh, Mr. DNA, where did you come from? From your blood. Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA, the building blocks of life. A DNA strand like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. A full DNA strand contains three billion genetic codes. If we look at screens like these once a second for eight hours a day, it'd take two years to look at the entire DNA strand. It's that long. That's why they're trying to say that we're in a simulation now. There's partial truth to that, but the, what they say is always mixed with a little bit of deception. But anyhow, in the blood you have DNA, and in the DNA is the building blocks of your life. Interestingly enough, in the Bible, the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11 says a very peculiar thing. And another thing to keep in mind is, how is it that the Bible contains this amazing scientific information that I'm about to show you? And I say that because, well, the Bible, this book in particular, was written thousands of years ago. But I thought all this was new information. It's not. Leviticus 17.11 says that the life of the flesh... Is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, that's exactly what they're finding out today. That your DNA, your life, what you're going to be, is in the blood. But it goes even deeper than that. If you look at the word life in the Strong's Concordance, which gives you the Greek definition for these words. That's what the New Testament was written in. It was written in Greek. The word life is the number, this is very interesting too, number 2222. Two, two, two. Now that's very interesting because that adds up to 8. And 8 in the Hebrew means transcendence and new beginnings. Transcendence means going beyond, transcending, and new beginnings, right? Remember, Noah got on the boat with seven other people. There were eight people on the boat. New beginnings. God wiped out, wiped out the earth, started over. Now, the, the word life in the Strong's Concordance doesn't only mean physical life, but if you look under the number 2222, it means your spiritual life. It also means the spiritual life. So not only is physical, tangible life in the blood, but your blood is also the container for the spirit. The spirit. And interestingly enough, I want to throw this in there, is that what blood does is it transports oxygen. And isn't it interesting that God breathed into Adam life through him, the spirit. And when he breathed in, 
we have blood transporting oxygen, which oxygen is your breath, and it transports all around your body. That's why when people get blood clots and things, it slows down the blood and it takes their breath. It's hard to breathe, harder to breathe. They don't have as much wind. Again, wind is like spirit in the Strong's Concordance. So I don't want to get off track here, but blood is the container for so much. It's the container for life. And, you know, when we look at life, it's the spirit and your DNA. So getting back to the blood of Jesus, why is his blood so important and scientific? I showed you how it's scientific, but the reason that we have to go through Jesus Christ to get to heaven is because to get to heaven, you have to be spiritually perfect. Not in your flesh. You're, you're born into corruptible flesh. But spiritually, and this has to do with it, inside your blood, spiritually you have to be perfect. And the only one who was spiritually perfect, who never sinned, was Jesus Christ. So through faith, through our faith, just simply believing in his perfectness, then we get to go to heaven through his righteousness. And this is really where the physical intermingles with the spiritual aspects in this life. You see, we are electrical beings as well as physical beings. That's why they hook an EKG monitor up to your heart. And they're, lo they're looking for electrical impulses. Why is that? How is that if we're just flesh? If we're just meat? Well, there is electricity. There is spirit that runs this sack of meat on everybody. And that's why it's so, so important to just believe on Jesus Christ. Just believe it. Believe that he's perfect and that you're not. So now you want to really get deep? Well, let's really get deep. So Jesus Christ died for our sins. And in the Bible, it says that sin is missing the mark. You're missing the mark, right? None of us can hit the mark all the time. Be perfect. But how deep does this go scientifically? Well, this... Is called a sin wave or a sine wave, depending on how you pronounce it. And what it is is a S-shaped wavelength. Looks a lot like DNA, doesn't it? And what it is is the the monitors, like you know, the monitors in the hospital showing the heartbeats. You sin wave, and it looks like a staff going down the middle, doesn't it? Maybe like when Moses took the staff and put the serpent on the staff. And he said, anybody to look at the serpent on the staff, you're going to be healed. Well, that's what the medical industry uses, a serpent on a staff. Well, this is a sin wave. It looks exactly like a serpent on a staff that is measuring the electrical impulses that are going through our body. So Jesus died for our sins. Well, when we sinned, well, when we're born into sin, but when Adam sinned and Eve, I believe that they dropped in a lower frequency and vibration. And through that sin, because we're talking about deeper than what we just do. It's what we are. We are a fallen creation in sinful flesh. Our flesh is full of sin. So even if you're perfect in your flesh, your flesh is still sinful because this flesh dies. And from the result of sin or sign dropping in lower frequency of vibration, this flesh dies. But that's why Jesus says that we'll be in glorified flesh without the sin. You get it? See how it's all connected? It's all scientific. We're dealing with things in the Bible that they're mysteries, but they're right in front of our face. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. King James Bible.